Okay, this video is going to be just a overview of kind of the main concepts that I want you guys to focus on for the final exam, um, as well as just two kind of practice questions to help you uh, get prepared for the types of questions you might see on the exam. So the areas of focus for the final exam. are the following. Basic differentiation, uh, you need to know how to be able to take the derivative of different types of functions using the power rule of differentiation, the chain rule, the quotient rule, the product rule. Okay, those are the four big rules that we talked about um, and so it's really important for the final exam that you can take the derivative of different types of functions um, as well as simplify them. Okay, next one. This is very important. This is the equation for the um, tangent line. So the tangent line can be found by taking a coordinate point, that's x1, y1, as well as the slope, m, um, and then plug that into this formula and then you get the equation of the tangent line of a function at a given at a given point x comma y x1 comma y1 okay next d capital f dx is equal to the derivative i'll say from a to x of f of t dt this is equal to f of x so in other words, this is the fundamental theorem of calculus. If I take the derivative of an integral, those operations cancel each other out. Okay. It's, this is the link between differentiation and integration. So it's really important you guys understand that for the final exam. Integration. So you need to know basic integration as well as u substitution. Those are the the two main areas that we focused on. And when I say basic integration, um, you also need to know the integral sine of x is negative cosine. And then the integral of cosine of x is positive sine. Okay, let's go through two questions. Number one, uh, this is finding the particular solution of a function given its derivative and, and we'll call this an initial condition. Uh, so if I'm given the derivative and I'm given the fact that f of 0 is equal to 1, I want to find f of x. Okay, We are not going to leave our answer in terms of a constant c because we are given an initial value so we can actually determine the specific solution of this problem rather than like a family of solutions with that constant c at the end. So the integral of the derivative is going to be equal to the integral of this function. And we're going to start by integrating this function. So we're not going to worry about the f of 0 equals 1 just yet. Um, let's start by integrating this. This is going to be a u-substitution problem. And it's a u-substitution problem because there is a expression in the integrand x cubed plus 1 whose derivative is located somewhere else in the integrand. And that's a clear indication that it's a u substitution problem. Um, and so this becomes the integral of u to the fifth in the denominator here, du. Well, this becomes, this can be rewritten as the integral of u to the negative five du. Um, and then the integral of this is u to the negative 4 over negative 4 because we're adding 1 to the exponent. Okay, so this becomes, uh, let's just rewrite this a couple more times. Uh, I'll write it over here. This is 1 over negative 1 over 4 u to the fourth in the denominator plus c. 
uh, and then u to the fourth, let's just rewrite this in terms of x. So negative one over four, oops, negative one over four times x cubed plus one to the fourth plus c. Okay, now what we're gonna do is use the initial condition f of zero equals one to solve this for c. So f of zero, let's plug zero in this equation for x, four, times zero plus one to the fourth plus c. This is equal to negative one over four plus c. Uh, and we know that the value of the function at zero is equal to one. And so the value of c is gonna be equal to five over four. So we're adding one fourth to one. So what that means is our final answer is gonna be determined by taking this value c, plugging it into our family of functions in terms of c here. So the answer for this one, f of x, is going to be negative one over f x cubed plus one to the fourth plus five over four. Okay, and that is the answer for this one. There's a few different ways you can rewrite this, but uh, anything that's equivalent to this statement here is uh, is an acceptable answer. You cannot answer this question in terms of C because we are given an initial condition. That means C has a certain value in this problem and that means you have to solve for C to actually get the final solution. All right, and let's wrap up this video by going through one practice problem here. So we're gonna let this function square root of x be a, um, we'll say it's a continuous function. It's graphed here at the bottom and it's, it's this part right here, uh, f of x, right here. There's a line L that's normal to the graph of f at the point four comma two, so let me just annotate that over here. Four comma two. We're gonna show that the equation of L is negative four x plus 18, okay? So we're gonna use a similar formula to what we used to find the equation of the tangent line. This time it's just the equation of the normal line. And just remember that the equation of the normal line is the same exact thing except the slopes, uh, the slope of the normal line is the opposite reciprocal of the slope of the tangent line. So let's write it like this. Um, I'll write it over here to the, uh, to the right. So we know that y minus y1, I'm gonna write it like this, m sub n, just so you know it's the slope of the normal line. Okay, we know it for, we know that x1 and y1 are uh, four and one. So now we just need to figure out what the slope is and then find the opposite reciprocal of that. So if the function is the square root of x, or another way to write that is x to the one half, then the derivative of this function is one half x to the negative one half. And we're gonna evaluate the derivative at four, because that's the x value. So if we plug in four here for the derivative, we get one half times one over root four. Well, that, just, that becomes one fourth. And this is the slope of the tangent line. This is the slope of the tangent line. If we want the slope of the normal line, what we're gonna do here is take the opposite reciprocal of this. So the slope of the normal line is gonna be equal to, we're gonna call it m sub m like we did before, uh, negative four, the opposite reciprocal of one fourth. So we're gonna plug in uh, what we know into this equation here at the top. Y minus our y value here, which is two, equals negative four times x minus four. And we, if we have to show that it's equivalent to negative four x plus 18, let's just simplify this and solve for y. So distribute the negative four, y is equal to negative four x plus 18, and that's the answer for part A. We verify that that's the answer in part A uh, for this problem set. 
In the diagram below, the shaded region R is bounded by the x-axis, um, the graph of F, and the line L. Find an expression for the area of R. Okay. And then for the next question, we're going to take that area and rotate it around the x-axis. So the important thing to recognize here is that we actually need to split this up into two parts because the function that is above the x-axis is actually changing uh, depending on what x value we are located at. Okay. So um, before we do anything, actually I skipped a question. We're going to find one comma or uh, one b here, and that is the x-intercept of l. Let's find that real quick. So if I want to find the x-intercept of l, I'm going to take this equation that represents the equation of l, and if I want to find the x-intercept, the y value at the x-intercept is always zero, so we're going to set this equal to zero. So 18 is equal to 4x, so x is equal to 18 over 4, um, which is also 9 over 2, 4.5. So that means this point right here is, uh, this is 4, uh, let me change it, let me zoom out a little bit. This is 4.5 comma 0, and this over here is still 4 comma 2. Okay, so now that we know that, we can go through part C. Part C wants us to find the area of R. Uh, so what I was saying before is that the area of R has to be split up into two regions. Uh, the first region is this part right here, because it's below f of x. But the second region is going to be right here, because the value of the region it can be found by... Um, taking the area between the other function, L, okay? So notice the function that is above the region is actually changing once we cross x equals four. Okay, it's a little tricky, but that means we have to split up this integral statement into two parts. Uh, part one, so R is equal to, part one is the integral from zero to four of f of x, which is the square root of x, dx. And then we're going to add to this the integral from 4, it's where we stopped our first integral statement, to the ending point, 4.5. Um, and we're going to integrate the actual function, negative 4x plus 18dx. Uh, and so this here for letter C, this represents the area of region R, the sum of these two integrals. Letter D is going to take this expression and we actually are going to rotate it around the x-axis and then determine, not just set up the integral for, but actually determine what the volume is going to be for this one. So this one looks like it's going to be the most amount of work because we actually need to calculate what the integral is. So let's just, uh, I'm going to, we're going to kind of go off what we did from letter C. The volume here for letter D um, it's going to be two parts. I'm going to treat these kind of separately. The first part is taking this region in red and rotating it around the x-axis. And to do that, we're going to multiply this statement by pi and then square the integrand. So we're going to evaluate what this is. And then the second part is going to be doing the same exact thing. With the other function. Okay, so just to give you a visual, imagine we took this region in R, that's red, rotate that around the x-axis, and then we're going to add to it the region uh, in blue. Okay, so that's our kind of goal here. I should have squared the integrand here. So let's start by going through these, this first integral. Here, this one looks like it's going to be easier becomes pi integral from 0 to 4 of x dx. Well, that's pi x squared over 2 evaluated from 0 to 4. It's a definite integral, so we don't need a plus c. 
and so this becomes pi 16 over 2 or 8 pi. So that's the region in uh, red, rotated around the x-axis. Blue, it's going to be a little bit trickier. So let's actually just go through this integral. This becomes negative 4x plus 18 times negative 4x plus 18 dx. Uh, let's FOIL this. So positive 16x squared. Uh, this becomes minus 144x. And then 18 times 18 is 324 plus 324 dx. Okay, now let's integrate this. So this is a 16 over 3 x cubed minus uh, half of 72, half of 144 is 72 x squared plus 324 times x. And we're going to evaluate this from 4 to 4.5. Okay, and if we plug this in, I won't go through all this work, but you end up with 2 pi over 3. Okay, that's one way to approach this. I would just want to go through one other way to think about this, um, especially if we're not given a calculator. You'll have a calculator for the final, but uh, another way you can think about this is imagine we were to just focus on the blue region. If we rotate that around the x-axis, we are given, uh, we end up with a cone. And so we can actually find the volume by taking the volume of a cone. And so another way to think about this, all right, or the volume of a cone is this. Um, the radius of the cone is gonna be the y value of our function, because that represents the distance from the axis of rotation, the x-axis, and the kind of the outside of the cone. So that's 2 squared times 0 0.5, which is the distance from uh, the bottom of the cone, 4, to the top of the cone, 4.5. So it's 0.5. And if we go through this, we get 4 over 3 pi times a half. Uh, well, that's 4 over 6 times pi, so that's 2 pi over 3. So a little bit easier than actually going through the integration here. Uh, but to actually get to our final answer, to wrap up this video, we are going to take the region in red and add to it the region in blue. And let's figure out what this is. So 24 pi over 3, let's find a common denominator. 2 pi over 3, so the final answer here is 26 pi. Okay, and that is the answer for this one. Okay, let's wrap up this lesson today by going through problem set number two, and I'll put the I'll leave the answer key right below this.